This is the Copper Crab Podcast. I'm Cheney Crab. Naveen Copperwise here. It's your weekly dose of Naveen and Cheney. We know you love it. It was a podcast about music and stuff. Now it's just about now us. it's just about us. It, it doesn't matter, though. <laughs> oh, it's coming in hot. Uh, but we have a guest today. We, the guests are back. We do. We, we made this bold statement uh, a couple of episodes ago, which if you guys couple. have been listening to us for a while, you might know that Naveen and I say a lot of shit. And then we switch our minds around a few weeks later. We're, we're on our 20th plan for what we're going to do with the new Entheos. <laughs> We seriously are. That's not a joke. Um, 20 is probably like putting it light. I think we've settled right now, though, on what we're going to do next. But anyway, nonetheless, we decided to just go ahead and have some more guests um, via Zoom. No, this is FaceTime straight up. It's it's FaceTime, whatever. It's not Zoom. But uh, yeah, so today we have on the podcast Jason Sukov, uh, who you guys might have heard of i don't know jason's a mega producer recording engineer uh he has worked with death angel deicide carnifex drowning pool cryptopsy job for a cowboy black dahlia murder trivium august burns red all that remains beneath the massacre chimera there's more i'm not gonna keep he's up. worked he's worked with like every band you like i was like oh you know jason's way chill let's get him on the podcast and then i went and like looked at his wikipedia page look at this i mean it's just Every band, <laughs> every band ever, like, and he it's also crazy. It also should be known that he's an insane musician uh, himself. He's a, like a really good guitarist, and he has he's in Charred Walls of the Damned uh, with the drummer from Death, and he also has Crotch Duster. You know, he's he's doing shit. So, Jason, we're really excited mm-hmm. to have him on the podcast today. We're, gonna, we're doing something different. We're going to call him. Instead of having him here for his intro. Yeah. So we're going to call him up right now. Uh, Let me enjoy. See how to Cheers, do this. guys. All right. Let's give it a try. Let's call him up. Boom. Let's see if he answers. He might not. <laughs> he just doesn't answer. He's like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yo, what's up? I'm yeah, hiding. Hold on. All right. No problem. No problem. No problem. But yeah, I met Jason because I just went out. Well, not just, but I went out to uh, record the new JFAC with him. So that's how we met. That's how we hit it off. That young job for a cowboy, for those and, of you uh, who aren't. We, we got along pretty well, I must say. The guy's pretty... We wrote, we wrote three songs about Halloween, but we're never going to release them. <laughs> <laughs> can you just email them to me so that I can hear him? Nope. <laughs> but Jason's way chill, man. Three well, Halloween um, tunes for I had a super you. good time hanging out with you, man. Dude, I had a great time hanging out with you. I kind of, I kind of want to, kind of want to climb inside you, dude. Reinvent your mind. <laughs> cool. You should. That's, I'd like to see that work itself out. And, Rick and Morty type. Oh, Rick and Morty. He did. He worked on a, a Rick and Morty track. Oh yeah, I forgot. Am I allowed to say that? that? I, I sure. I just yeah. you know it was it was fun. I had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did that come about? How did you? I for, totally just forgot me, about that. Just me and Alex. Uh, we just recorded a cover and uh, I don't really know exactly what I am allowed to talk about. Yeah. So, <clears throat> anyway, he, we'll just yeah. leave that there. Everybody can investigate for themselves. <laughs> there are just a lot of Alex secrets. Record, just me and Alex recorded a cover of, yeah. of the of the thing because we're fans of the show. Yeah. That's totally. it. And That's I, cool. I, That's sent, that. I sent it to homie and shit was sick. That, you know? That's, That's pretty dope. Now you're, now you're there, in... There's a longer version of it, but no one was, you know what I'm saying? Ugh. Yeah, no, everyone, no everyone one cares, does dude. Hear. Everyone <laughs> does want to hear. I did. I was like, tell me about that. Anyway, um, <laughs> Jason, I was just like, I was just saying like, I was like, yeah, Jason's way like goofy and funny. Let's get him on the the show, right? And then I was like, well, I should probably know a little bit more about him other than like, you know, we like to make Apple dad jokes. And there's, I, there's really nothing to know about me, dude. So then <laughs> like, I went, I, I went know. to your Wikipedia page, and I know, obviously I know that you, you're a producer and stuff. And I was like, Jesus Christ, it, your Wikipedia page is fucking BDE. It, it's dude. impressive. <laughs> what happened? I didn't do it though. There might be lies on there. I don't even know. That's I true. I don't know. Maybe, probably not. This thing seems pretty legit. I know that my Wikipedia page is is pretty wrong. Dude, I don't like reading. You don't like yeah. reading, yeah. Yeah. Are well, you done? Well, how many times have I tried to FaceTime you and you're just like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's true. You that's, did. <laughs> that's why I actually wanted to do fa- this interview over FaceTime because yeah. you get the full Jason experience. Like this yeah, is, dude. 
I was thinking about not wearing a shirt for you, but it's actually not totally hot here right now. Really? Oh, really? Well, what's the it's temperature actually, there? It, it was. Was it cool last night too? Yeah, it was actually. It's yeah. It's 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 and by cool. It's probably like in the 60s. Yeah. Well, dude, that's pretty cool for Florida, great. though. Yeah, dude, I I have to be honest. I can't really stand being in Florida for more than like a week or two because of the humidity. Well, I feel like that's because you've always arrived here, like either between the months of like May, like the end of May yeah. or middle May or late to like August. Late it's August. It's always so. late August. Yeah. Every or time. Because sometimes it'll pop up. It'll be like a hundred. Like close to 100% humidity outside. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like horrible. So, dude, you know how you gave me that little, <laughs> those was, little, uh, I was going to say, thermometers? because of that, I always know about what the humidity is here and the temperature is here now because you gave it's Naveen sick, right? this. Yeah, those yeah. are way sick. When you gave me those, I was like, yeah. Although, I don't know, I'm a little concerned that, the, that they're not that accurate because sometimes in my van, it'll say that it's like 100 six degrees and i'm like i don't know if it's really 106 degrees about i mean what do, what do you think i don't know it might be because like i remember like it would you've seen like the like the thermometer and cars the one that it's like right there under a lot of cars have it just says how hot it is like you get yeah. in there and it's yeah. like it says things like that yeah so jason <laughs> has like, like a whole pack of these thermometers yeah i got I ordered so they're laying because i wanted to make sure that the the, sh- the weed i was buying wasn't fucking disgusting you know <laughs> you, so you bought them mainly for the humidity aspect yeah because if it's under 55 percent, it's gonna be dry apparently and taste not good and over 62 percent, it can grow mold and then everyone can smoke mold and you're, i don't think that's probably a terrific thing Cheney, you need to step i know your game up, dude. I, that's Blown what i'm it. thinking you're on a like super stoner level right now <laughs> that i wish i could achieve because well the minute I got into, I went into high. I got into hydrate because you would buy these hydrating packs, uh, yeah. these Integra Boost things. But I, if you, I feel like it, it's like for you can't have it long enough to where if I had like tons and tons of weed, it'd be great. Yeah, right. like pounds and pounds. Then you could like store it away. But like if you get weed and it's like thirty nine percent humidity and you're trying to hydrate it up to a normal thing, it's like. It's not really worth it. Well, it's like it's already down there. It's done. <laughs> I haven't. What are the the hydration packs you're talking about? I haven't even heard of those. They're called Integra Boost, okay. and you, they have it on, on on Amazon. Oh shit! And it just it basically just keeps it right. You can buy the fifty five packs or the sixty two, and they say that it's better to cure at around fifty five, ah, and six, yeah. sixty two is just to kind of leave it where it's at because apparently that's the perfect community. But I, I stopped being so obsessed with that because all it was doing was making me sad. I would love <laughs> to scroll through your uh, Amazon. I know. I, yeah, I kind of would too. <laughs> I might. It me seems too. like I would buy a lot of things that you've bought. Yeah, it's like all sorts but of I little have, ga- weed gadgets. Yeah, I have to say, the f- like right when Naveen arrived at your house to record that JFAC album, he sent me a picture of your, your press, your, your rosin press. And I, I was, was like, like oh my God, this, out, dude. this guy is up. a professional. What, what inspired you to get that instead of just smoking, you know, I buying got, oil? I or... bought some, well, my friend, uh, my friend Mike had showed me this rosin. It was, it was hash rosin, mm-hmm. but I had heard about flower rosin and how you could like step on a, like you could get one of those hair things. Oh, a straightener. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you could like put the weed between the paper and step on it. But, like, I'm not going to step on anything, and I'm not going to be like, hey, Ron. <laughs> Come inside. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> it's so trashy to do that shit, too. I've thought uh, about it, but I'm like, I don't I don't, I don't know no, if I need I'm to not, do that. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. But uh, I bought rosin from the store, when I was, and it, it tasted so disgusting. I was like, this can't be how it's supposed to taste. Yeah. I'm like, I'll just buy it, because it's only going to taste as good as the stuff you put in there. Mm-hmm. So... It's it's not like it's gonna make it better, and all it does is really do is it, it's I I would compare it to if you vape weed before like oh, yeah. with the wand and you it's basically that you're you're kind of like that but dabbing it and as long as you do it at low temp it's it's really good. Um, this guy also know. has like a vape bong rechargeable thing though. I don't even know that. Oh, That's you probably have a bat- not the right oh. word, but it's, like, it's it's called a puffco peak. Oh yeah, yeah I've smoked out of sick. one of those. Those are awesome. Yeah, and. and uh, my my homie uh, Eric Eric Anders made the the glass piece for it, and he's super super cool guy. He's sent me a bunch of glass pieces just because he's a sick dude. Yeah, and super just sick. so everyone out there knows, because Jason is in where in Florida are you? 
I don't know, dude. Oh, yeah. What's your address? I'm, 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 in, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in the Orlando area. Okay. <laughs> but that, that medical weed, which I didn't know until we just talked before this, is a thing there. When did that yeah, it's happen? Been, it's been legal for a couple of years. Um, That's awesome. It was having a card is great. They've got some rules, but honestly, there's nothing better than being able to drive home from a store with weed and not have to worry about anything. You're telling me, man, I'm from Iowa. So moving to California to with Naveen, it's like being able to walk into a store and buy the pick out the specific strain of weed that I want and take it home and not face any repercussions because of that. If I got pulled over is one of the best things about yeah, living in California. I mean, we're so behind Cali and, and Colorado, but that's fine. Um, I'll be patient. I, I've you're been still stoned, right? Now, I mean, so yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You're still, you're You'll still be smoking. a patient while you're being a patient oh. because you can go buy, you can buy weed. That's pretty sick to be able to do. Yeah, it's it's good because it's it was ridiculous to be illegal before. I know. I totally agree <laughs> with you. I can't like wrap my mind around why alcohol is so socially acceptable and and legalized everywhere, but weed isn't. It seems really silly. Because people don't like smoke. And <laughs> that's a good point. Know. That's a good point. I've never thought of that. People don't like have, smoke. Have you ever alcohol thought? doesn't really smell like anything. Yeah, true. Like that. A, I don't know. Have you ever except, thought like except alcohol, but you know, yeah, like that yeah. dried beer smell at a bar. <laughs> yeah, this. I, have you ever thought though, because it's maybe like this is way some stoner stuff and I don't even smoke, but have you ever thought it's because when you drink beer, you're kind of like an idiot, like a useful idiot. But if you smoke, yeah. you're kind of like I'm a, I'm a useless idiot. Like if you <laughs> if you smoke, you're kind of like. Your you know, mind what's is the, open. What's the use of it, man? Like, yeah. why should I do that? Yeah. You know, like type of a thing. I don't know. I've thought about that before. And I'm less questioning and more just I'm more motivated when I when I smoke. See, yeah. I don't get that. If I'm smoking, I'm not motivated to do anything no, except you, for get the munchies. You get like super philosophical too. Yeah. When you're, it's a weird. All scene drugs. Like you're a super philosophical guy. Period. Though. Which he, is he is. Which is extent. weird because I I feel like I am sort of philosophical, if you will. But I, I've spent my whole life like making fun of that sort of thing and being like this guy who wears like a Coors Light hat and just like poke fun at it my whole yeah. life. So, but it's there, I guess you could say. For sure. Did you dress up last night, Jason? Nope. Do you know that it was I Halloween my, last night? <laughs> yeah. Did, did, did you? First of all, did you know floor. that Halloween was last night? <laughs> yeah, we knew. Yeah. I knew. I knew, dude. I. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to be that guy this year, dude. I yeah, didn't want to be we, the guy. We, we were gonna go hang out with some friends, and then we got down to this beach, and then there was like nowhere to park. And we were just kind of like, uh, it was permit parking. So if like, if I, if we were thinking, okay, let's leave the car there. We'll drink some beers with our friends and then just take you're an Uber home. You're feel wicked shot. No, no, no we're we shot. don't ever do shot, anything. You, listen, you gotta listen to the listen, rest of the story because we're shot. So, the, but on the way there, we're like, right, well, maybe we should bring like a snack or something. Right. So right across the street from the beach, there's a little Caesars. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, well, I'll just fucking grab a little Caesars. Right. So we have the little Caesars and we're looking for a parking spot and stuff and stuff. And we're like, dude, all right, let's just, let's just take off. Maybe we'll go downtown and get a beer. Right. So we started driving downtown and then we get downtown and we're like, all right, let's just go home and eat this fucking little Caesars and just chill and watch scary movies. <laughs> so we didn't do anything. <laughs> so we dressed we up shit. for nothing. Yeah. Dude, we dr Naveen wants his own pizza. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, dude. Dude, he told me that he uh, showed you the way of Domino's or that you weren't. You know, you know, it's like I knew about Domino's, but I didn't want to ever try them because I just, I'd rather just go to the real place that that, that has the dude from the Bronx. I get it. Yeah, pizza. I get it. Straight I get up. It. I, I agree. It. Because I it. he makes it the, the sick white pie. Of course. Like with, mm. with, the, with the regatta and shit. Oh. And dude, don't get it wrong. We get that kind of stuff too. But the thing is, sometimes. But you know what? You're, <clears throat> sometimes you want like the candy pizza. Though. Dude, I was. True. And, and like you said, it's like we can each get our own pizza. It's like 12 bucks. Well, Chaney gets a lot of extras. So she bumps it up to like 19 bucks. <laughs> but. It's 19 bucks. We both have pizza. We both feel horrible about ourselves afterwards. Because when I first got there on the first night to do the, the JFAC thing, I was like, you guys, on the last night, we got to get Domino's. Dude, straight up. Yeah. That, that's and, my new kind of like, it's in the list now of when I'm going to blow it on my diet. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, like, dude. we're either going to do Domino's, Taco Bell. Yes. Oh. Or like some pasta a la Rondo nightmare dish. What does a la Rondo <laughs> mean? Ron's just going to make some pasta. Oh, <laughs> oh Ron. 
<laughs> Holy shit. For those of you who don't know, Ron is is his like housemate, I guess you could call him. Another guy that lives with you. And yeah, dude. We have lived together for like three thousand years now. It's crazy. Damn. Yeah, that's solid, dude. That's awesome. But uh what keeps you guys living together for three thousand years? How can you put put up with each other for that? We're long? best friends, dude. That's we're, awesome. We're yeah. real best friends. Like yeah. the, the best friends you see in movies about. And then but we've 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 had a fight or two, but we've never like left and had the sick music playing where it's all sad. He's also sitting like on the couch next to yours right now, no, so he's he can't not. say anything. He's, he's he listening. <laughs> Alex is Alex is fucking doing his thing, dude. Hell yeah! Oh, I was yeah. gonna ask. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about it, but can we can we ask about what you're working on right now, or should we should we not do we that? We can all talk right. about it, dude. You want to talk about what are you working on? What are you working on right now? Yeah, what are you working on right now? We're doing uh. Some Necrogoblicon, fucking nice, sick, nice. sick, fucking tune life. That's awesome. And uh, that's awesome. You, you want to you want to talk about what it's for? Because I feel like you know better than me. <laughs> or can <laughs> or can we talk about that? Oh wait, you're working. We'll go into specifics. Yeah, we're no, we're no. working on a new album, and then nice plus some more. A uh, new album plus mm. some more. It's an album plus, dude, like Apple Plus. That's album sick. Plus. I was just listening to the the Chop Suey cover earlier, and it fucking <laughs> rules. As I, it's fun, it's fun, right? <laughs> dude, it's so good. I love Necro Goblicon, though. We went on tour with them. Um, I don't know. It was like four years ago or something. Like it was Maybe awesome. three years ago. 2018 with uh, with Rings of Saturn. Yeah, it was 2018. Okay, there we go. Oh, Alex shit. knows more. Alex than. is like, yeah. yeah let's, Alex, let's get a Alex shot is of in the podcast. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, so we with the whole way home from. <laughs> hey, man, how are you? This is the best podcast that we've ever done. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So the yes, whole way, <laughs> the whole way home from that tour, I think you guys were like about to put out the record. What is it? Welcome to Bonkers. Is that the name? Yeah, of? yeah. That was so our we first the whole way driving home from that tour. Naveen and I were jamming that record and we're like, yeah, like oh dude, my god sick. you guys fucking awesome. great. I mean I knew that you were like a fun band to watch live you guys like bring it live but just sitting down and listening Naveen to was the like, record dude this is the fucking most dynamic snare I've ever heard in my life oh that, what, that <laughs> song that you showed me that new song yeah, oh yeah, you got he, sh- he showed me song. some of the songs. I'm, I'm that's full sick. Disclosure. So Naveen has heard the oh, yeah. the secrets. And it sounded killer. It sounded really good. <laughs> but what have? How have you <laughs> been, <laughs> Alex? It's because Jason made it sound killer. It wasn't uh, me, dude. It was my. <laughs> yeah. It was my. Uh, it was my dog. <laughs> yeah, his dog did all the editing. His dog oh. is Tippy in there right now too, or can we? Yeah, can, can we, we get her in the podcast? Tippy took off uh, to, to Ron Town. Oh, Ron Town. Oh, got it. Got it. All right. Ron-ton. So we've got this is like a full on audio hammer guest uh, <laughs> yeah. invaders you might could call it audio hammer. I'm gonna hold this now just because audio hammer. I broke the thing, so it's this is kind of like yeah, all my, good. It's a all selfie good. stick. Yeah. I got this sick neck warmer that's like it's dude. How sick is this thing? Right? <laughs> it looks really <laughs> cool. As I didn't even know I didn't know neck warmers existed, and then I got one of these. You know what I did. Notice is that you have about five hundred, maybe maybe six hundred, uh, Necrogoblicon shirts. Yeah, dude. That's because <laughs> fucking these guys are the sickest. They send me the most merch ever. Yeah, kind of We're blowing it there. In Florida, so it's it's like right here. Yeah. Oh, it gets to him before it gets uh, to any, okay. any of our fans. Right. Wait, who's the who's your merch retailer? Uh, AKT. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm not sure which is the. I don't know which one I ever called them by. I kind of say it interchangeably. But. Okay. The Kukul Karens of tomorrow. That, how did you know that's what it's said for? <laughs> I, I don't know. Hell yeah. We're out here repping Florida too, but we do night shift. You know that Kareem. Oh, does he live in Florida? Yep. Oh, oh I, I love yeah, I know Kareem. Kareem's the best. Dude, yeah, he cool. fucking rules, man. I like go on about. That's why we switched to night shift. I was selling our merch for a long time, but when Kareem started that company, I was like, we gotta sell merch with this guy. He just knows his shit. Maybe we should awesome. have him on the podcast sometime. Should we three way call him real quick? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's the I weekend. Don't think he's probably do that, dude. He's probably like yeah, being a, a sick dude. With I'm just kidding. Wife I'm not gonna really do that. Being all super and with chill, and then kids. we're like, hey. Jason, How's you're you're the most Sunday like going? you're one of the only dudes I know who will just cold FaceTime me. You know what I mean? Just man, I'll tell you what, Mark. <laughs> Mark, Mark. <laughs> oh yeah, Mark gave this. Uh, he he did a story about it, and he was like, "Man, don't be calling me on FaceTime like this." <laughs> That, that's his Mark Lewis impersonation to everybody knows. Because Mark it's used to, accurate, it's not accurate, but it's it's you know what I'm saying. Well, it's it's, you, it's 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 beyond him now. It's yeah, see, that's yes. the thing. You do what I do, and when I impersonate someone, I make up a new character that is like 
in yeah, the vein dude, of that person. If they're just themselves, then how can we make it better, dude? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I know. But yeah, I guess for those who don't kidding, know, dude, Mark themselves is the best version of whoever they are. That's true. Ex- unless you do an impersonation of them, that's even better. No, Not dude. possible. <laughs> no, that cracks me up. That Mark. Wait, thing. so uh, did you and Mark used to work together or something? How? Yeah, Mark. Mark, pretty much. We're talking about Mark you know, Lewis, for the record. Mark, I'm just, I was trying to think of his middle name. MRL. It's an R. Raphael. Maybe it's Ray. Roy. It's something real slick. Ray. Whatever it is, it's really slick. Randolph. I hope, I hope it's Ray. Perfect. Mark Ray. I hope Lewis. it's I hope it's Rudolph. <laughs> it's not it's Rudolph. Not. Either it can't way. Be. It can't be. Mark. Mark was pretty much here from 2005 to 2000. When did he move to fucking Tennessee? Was it 2017? Yeah, I feel like or- it wasn't that long ago because Entheos was on tour and he came to... Uh, An Orlando show. Yeah, he yeah. Had, he lived there and it was probably yeah. 2016. And then he came to Whitechapel. Yeah. And and he like hung out hard. And I was like, dang, this guy's like really cool. I like this guy. All right, man. I'm fucking hanging all goddamn night. And I don't even fucking care. <laughs> he did that, dude. I was he like, did do that. Dang, like, he like the show ended and everyone left, and Mark was just kind of like, he was hey, there. I'm, I'm you guys know where the fucking gym's at? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, whoa, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> fucking. He, uh, we we worked together from 2005 to 2008, pretty much everything, and then I was like, you know. He should be doing stuff on his own because me giving him what I was giving him, uh, you know, he didn't have time to do what he needed to do. So whatever. Okay. So he guys, originally he worked work. like was he for your, you or, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, was he or? your apprentice? Yeah, he or? was like, he was my engineer. Okay. Damn. All right, basically Jason got him in the game. That's yeah, so Lark Mewis we owes best, everything we to you. We were friends and we were fucking engineered our lives together and, and fucking, nice. I don't know. We made love, and it was weird, dude. <laughs> I'm just right. kidding. We, we didn't do anything. That's dude. beautiful. Yeah, no, Mark's cool. I like. I I had a really good time recording with him, and and uh, actually, two of the fun. I, I'd say the two funnest recording sessions I've ever done are going out with Mark and then going out there with you. That, like, that, that, that was how, how was working with Naveen, Jason? Did you enjoy it? Was he like a? Was he hard to work with? Uh. Yeah, right, dude. Come on. <laughs> You're kind that. of a bitch, dude. No yeah. way. I know. Uh, no, no, he doesn't no. mean that. I, basically, now I'm going to be sad to track everyone for the rest of my life. Wow. <laughs> that's that's well, beautiful. Well, because, like, you pretty wow, much thank you, man. Thank you. do all the stuff. All the you stuff. You know what I'm saying? You do all the stuff. Thank you. But you're also kind of a dick. <laughs> That's really what I was asking. Was, he being, just, was, he, being know, a, was he being a dick? I will that? say there was one point where I was, I knew that I was being a dick. I don't really remember, but I was, and you kind of. But I'm so used to that. It doesn't even phase me. Dude. I, I felt so bad because you're so good at dealing with people who suck that I was like, wow, he's, he's doing his thing where he has to deal with someone who sucks right now. You know N- what I mean? Naveen to me, I think, <laughs> I think from an engineer standpoint, Naveen would be slightly difficult to work with. I'm being honest. Like I've seen him like, at work and I, I, I know and like, I would see you move a symbol. I'd be like, did you move the symbol? And you're like, no. <laughs> well, we did have some, fuck. we had some really weird issues with like the snare or the Tom or I don't know, something where yeah, we you said that you got like the snare basket caught in the snare. And that's how we like got the sound. It sounded yeah. so sick. And then we went and changed the head and you put it back. You're like, I can't get the wires stuck in the snare. It was literally that like hours, like hours fucking around with this snare. That was the night I almost cried. Yeah. And I think snare. that was when I was like, really? all right, I'm going to fucking lose it, dude. Like, I just can't fucking do this. Like, I couldn't I'm, get the snare back, dude. And it was so sick. And yeah. like, it was just missing this high end that made me yeah. happy. And but you, eventually, yeah. I decided to convince myself that it was time to move on. And you were right. Like, when you played it back for me, because I was like, what the fuck is wrong? This guy is like out of his mind. And then you were like, come in here and hear it. And I was like, all right, he's got a point. It is, it was better. You know, it was a little bit better. But I probably was like, no, it's cool, dude. It's it's all good, you know, because I'm... It's fine. That's why it's I'm fine. not a recording engineer, to be honest with you. Like, I've, I'm have i pretty decent at recording. I'm not going to lie. Like, at tracking and stuff, I'm, I'm good at it. But yeah. when it comes to stuff like that, I just don't have the patience for it, man. You know? 
Like I've noticed like with you and Zach and stuff, it's like they'll, you guys are not like going to let any little bullshit slide, you know, whereas I'll just be like, well, I don't know. It's cool. Fix it later. <laughs> you know, no, I, I understand what it's like though, tracking yourself because you can definitely like track yourself. And when you're done with everything, like sometimes those little things like don't even like matter. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. All. Exactly. Right now I'm trying to get tippy. Here's tippy. Tippy. I'm trying. Damn, Tippy. Oh, trying hi, to, tipster. She, she's trying to eat a Q-tip. I'm Tippy to is a massive Yeah, you have to stop waller. her. My mom had to get uh, take her dog to go under surgery for eating Q-tips. Damn, seriously? Well, she doesn't eat them. She just puts it in her mouth and hides it under the toy. Scare tactic. She's never, she never swallowed it. Really? I wonder why. Yeah, well, her name is Tippy. So. Tip, tip. Yeah, she's tip, a tip, tip, tip. Yeah. Um, I feel like I didn't finish talking about Mark. We skipped to the. Oh, yeah, yeah Mark. keep going. Tell us more. Short, but we, it we sounds pretty like much a did, love story. Like, everything together, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. up till. I feel like maybe all that remains was maybe the last one uh, that we did together. But you might have been engineering for me on that because I can't remember. But either way, like after that, like we just. Well, he hey, would I engineer, got your whole, he I got would your engineer whole for me. Thing pulled up. Like Let's when see. he had time after, after we went out. And he still worked here, though. He stayed here. Oh, okay. So, like. He was here the whole time until Tennessee. Got it. Yeah, got it. And did you help him like shampoo and condition or? No, it's, no? I, I never don't know how to make it look as sick as he does, dude. <laughs> He's got this thing. He, br- he brushes a lot. Like, I know. He a room. His hair is so fucking sick, dude. <laughs> it's like a mane of glory. Well, I told you. What, no, I told it is. you. What. It's got a, a glisten. It to really it. does. I know it sparkles when he walks under the light, and it hits it just right. It's like, and it's like all straight and fucking clean. Like all somehow stays together when it moves, dude. It's like a fucking commercial. I know he can. He's one of those ones who can do like the whip. And it will just look like beautiful. He's a fucking lucky dude. Yeah. He's like the type of person with, with, where with he's hair. he's like always in slow motion. You know what I mean? Like that kind of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I told guess. you what his secret is because he he told me what the secret What's is about his secret? hair. Beach babe. Oh, uh, beach babe salt spray. That hair stuff. Whoa, tip, salt spray. Tippy's yeah. bark is like if you were mm. to put the sample of a dog bark on a keyboard. She does a really good Jeff Walker. Like, just like, <laughs> she does that like all day long. A little that's bit sick. lower, but it's all sick. Get her in a band, dude. Yeah, nope. Yeah. She's probably better than you know, Like, if you're uh, playing, if you're playing with her and her toys, she'll be like, she'll be pulling on the toy and she's like, rrr, rrr, you know, that kind of a thing. Yeah, she's a dog. Basically. She is a dog. R- oh, yeah. Ron, they, Ron's here. Say hi to Ron. Hello. Hey, Ron. Ron. What's up, man? How's it going? Good. I had a question for Jason last night. Yeah, let's hear it. Would, Ask him. Would, would he go to a restaurant that's just a bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> would you go to a restaurant that's just a bathroom? Is yeah. That- All right, answer it. What? What <laughs> would you? <laughs> There's, but I, I didn't get to the next part ever because because it's awesome. <laughs> but is there like a chef? Is there a line cook? <laughs> yeah. Are there, buzz- are there buzzers? At the bathroom restaurant, you cook your own meal. Damn. Oh, you cook your own I meal? I don't know about this bathroom restaurant. I I'm think probably I not could, going. I think I would go. I'm not going. See? I'm not going. <laughs> They're not going. I'm not no, going. no, I'm, I'm going. Going, I'm going. I think they'd serve a good ramen or like a good soup. Tip. Are we okay, going but, to the bathroom no, restaurant? Ugh. All right, Tip. You need a Popo's? <laughs> Tibia only goes to the bathroom restaurant. Who's a good girl? Let's go post post tip tip. Yeah. So what else have you been working on lately, Jason? <clears throat> Just, Just Necrogoblicon that, right? and, and uh, working on the JFAC, and I'm doing Enterprise Earth drums in, uh, in January. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice. So you're just nice. working on nice. JFAC and Necro for the rest of the year pretty much? Yeah, dude, they paid me to never work with anyone else unless they gave me triple the money ever. <laughs> they no they have that Joe Rogan money now. Who does? So they're just oh, like no, a oh, necro yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. in that, that appearance, you're just like, don't worry, dude. <laughs> We're set. You're good. We're set. Yeah, if you get mentioned on there, you're good for life. <laughs> no matter what. But, dude. You need water. Uh, Jason, I wanted to ask you. I had a question for you, dude. Like, uh, what was your first recording setup, dude? 
Because you've been doing. Because I know you've like now every like, like every demo fucking or demo just like or every like kid actual studio. I don't know. It's like because I feel like I got into it. Like I'm not trying to brag, but I got into the rec- home recording thing like right before every other person on the planet got into it. You know what I mean? So I got into you got into it like right. ten years prior to that. So I'm just wondering what that shit looked like. Like, were you on like a like a hardware thing, or were you like having a, a Honestly, PC, well, like a we're Dell, or something? Like 87, dude. What? 87. 87. I started playing guitar in '88, so I Damn. think I started that, playing. That's the year I was born. Record. Damn. I had a Fostex X15 four track, like little cassette Dewey okay. thing. All right, got it. Whoa. So, and it was like, you know, my dad would always be like, check out the Beatles. If you pan it this way, it's just the drums. If you pan it that way, you know, so you could just, you ever listen to Strawberry Fields and yeah, you pan sure. it oh, yeah. around? He's oh, yeah. giving you like, he's giving you way old info. <laughs> yeah. So was your. <laughs> I'm way fucking old. It, so your dad was obviously like a music nerd to some extent. Was he into. Yeah, he's a drummer. Oh, okay. Well, that makes he's sense a, why I was explaining. I showed him the click track today. <laughs> today? <laughs> Uh, he know well. He knows about it because uh, he knows about like it. Like playing to a he click, was, you mean? That's he was he was practicing. It. I, he, I don't think he's ever just practiced to a click. Yeah. Oh, huh. you know, I'm telling the story all wrong, dude. Let's old guys, over. old guys right. don't need to play to a click, dude. They are the click. You know what I mean? And he plays the fucking traditional grip. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's like my dad. My dad's like that too, for sure. Yeah. He's, he's probably in never a, played he's to in a, a click. Band and here with a bunch of other uh, like people. Apple dads. A bunch of other Apple dads, dude. They're called <laughs> Running with Scissors, and they're they're uh, they're sick. They play covers. Oh, that's rad! Fuck. It's a bunch of uh, Apple dads, dude. <laughs> you know how Apple dads are. There's always one dad that's not as cool as the others. <laughs> always. I remember like we were recording, and Jason was like, "Dude, Apple dads," and I was like, "What the fuck's that?" Yeah, and what's we were an like, Apple dude? Dad? I don't know. It's just funny, and I was like, "Okay, I got, I got this guy." Like I get him now. This guy and I sick. forgot about it until you said it. <laughs> I was like, okay, me and this guy are gonna be friends. I get, I get how this guy rolls. Just being weird. I'm sad you live fucking sixty seven thousand miles that way. Dude, it it's sucks. A long it's way. seriously like all the people that, literally, except for one, like Chase Frazier, the guy that was in animosity with me. He's like my oldest friend. Frasier. He he lives in uh, Santa Cruz, but other than that, I mean, it's. It's all my friends live like in other parts of the country, man. It's crazy. Or all How the world, are you from San Dimas? <clears throat> Fuck. I don't even know. Is that Southern California? I have no idea. Where I don't know. Are. I just know about it because Bill and Ted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah, that's, 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 so, that's Southern Star California. Trek just started its life up for no reason. Oh, that's no. sick. We're like, we're in Northern California, so it's, we're. F- is that, wait, Northern? Is that San Francisco? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we much. live like an hour south yeah. of San Francisco. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, so every every like you know typical. You live in Lost Boys world. Dude, uh, yeah, we, we live in the board. We the boardwalk is downtown here. Dude, Santa Carla. The opening. Yeah, this we is, live in Santa Carla. Yeah, exactly. Too many goddamn vampires. <laughs> I love that movie so much, man. But I guess. Okay, so you had the Fostex four track, four track. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, what was your first re- setup where you like recorded a band? Like, okay, I think I can. I think I can. Did you have a moment where you were like? You know what? I think I can record bands on my like on my own. I'm going to try it out. Like when, when was that? You know? Um I had like a studio in the basement that my dad put down there and we we had a Tascam a Tascam 388 which was a half inch 8 track. Damn. And you still have that thing? And uh and a Tascam M512 console which was like a I think this was a 12 channel console or maybe it was a 16. I can't remember. I think it was 12. I think it was a 12 channel, eight, eight bus console. <clears throat> and, uh, then after having that for years in the basement, just fucking around recording, just me and my brother, basically, yeah. I just jammed with my brother. He was, yeah, your brother drummer. plays drums. Yeah. Plays drums. Right. Yeah. That's... And well, he's um, your brother. You have a band with your brother, right? Uh, yeah. Kafarnum, he played drums in. Okay. Um, but, he he plays drums on and off uh, for, like, I don't think he actually has a set because he can't have one in his house. God, that um, sucks. I don't miss those days, tell you what. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's only been a year that I can play drums at my house, but. 
I'm just Whatever. trying to think. I've, I, I haven't gone through a studio history in my brain for a I know. Long I time. Just, it was something that popped into my head <laughs> today, and I was like, no, but dang, I, I, I actually, exactly I actually just personally want to know. I started recording bands in my basement in 94, and it was a Mackie. Like, I was all stoked. I got a bunch of consoles between, like, I went from a Tascam M512 to a Fostex. It was like a 20 channel console that was so 20 by 8, and buses 7 and 8 were the main left and right, and it was fucking stupid so there's no was, computer involved in this setup right no now. i didn't okay. even get a com like i didn't have any real computer-based recording until 2003 oh, or wow. two um but no i it was a <clears throat> mackie 24 by 8 which is a it was a pretty cool little console and it was that and a tascam msr 16 half inch and uh i did like uh like hardcore bands in my basement. Oh yeah, we, did, we need to I add those band bands Tide. to your to yeah. your Wikipedia, dude. So if you could text the, me those band names, <laughs> the band Red Tide, uh, their drummer is in Killswitch now. Oh, okay, Justin Justin Foley. Oh 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 okay okay. okay. He's he's super sick, man. He's always been sick. Nice. I like grew, we grew up, you know, just being like huge cynic fans and oh, yeah and fucking, but they were kind of like Red Tide was kind of like the jazzy. Kind of just like, 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 like Candiria ish. Yeah, Candiria worship. Like See, that's how I you know this guy's Candiria old because he knows who fucking Candiria is. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I saw them at Pearl Street a bunch of times. I feel like. Where are you from? Connecticut. Okay, so you. Well, I was born. I was born in Baltimore, and I lived there not long enough to say that I'm from Baltimore. Totally. But I was born there, so that's cool. And then I moved to Connecticut. I think. So why'd you, yeah. why'd you I go don't know to if there was somewhere in between. That's where my dad went for his residency, I guess. Oh, okay. And, and then, then uh, Florida, why? I moved here in 98 because wanted uh, be I wanted swampy. to go to Full Sail because I wanted to go to recording school. But I dropped out because smart. I just wasn't feeling it. Dude, well, all so, smart people, they drop out of school. Yeah, I was going to ask sucks. you, would you recommend that to people to go to school for... I wouldn't recommend going to school school to anybody yeah, that I, wants to like that i can't say for sure because you know like there's always going to be that kid that goes to the school that that gets lucky or actually does learn something but i, I don't know i i just feel like it's something that you're gonna you can only figure out by doing yourself and failing for fucking years so well i'm not i'm just not a fan of recording school in general yeah because i mean especially um, nowadays I, I, but I'm, it's not up for me to say who can learn what you know what I'm saying? That's True not that. for me to say. I just personally think that the only way to learn is by failing for like years and just like Eating trial shit. and error. Because yeah. it's you can only learn technical things. You can't really learn to hear anything. It's yeah. like I feel like it's like singing. You know, you can either sing or you can't. And like even if you're a good singer, you're gonna either it's like the tone of your voice is desirable or it's not. And there's nothing you can do to change it. That's, that's just that's what it is. So you can, unless you're, yeah. unless you like sing like someone to impersonate them to make fun of them, and you're good at that, then maybe you can sound like that person. But you're just making fun of them, so you can't right. really do anything. <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's only so many layers of trying not to do the thing. I agree, man. I yeah, mean, like I, I also feel like you're, years. in a way, because I'm a vocalist. I've felt like. I I was meant to be a vocalist my entire life. Like there was never I never tried to be a vocalist. If I tried to be something, it probably would have been something that was more lucrative. You know what I mean? Like so is that kind of what you're getting at? Like it's it's it, uh, it's built into people. I just think it's gonna. I just don't think there's certain things you can learn. I think yeah. you can either. Yeah, it's part Absolutely. of what it's you innate. can do or what you can't do. Yeah. And I, I don't think, think there's someone that's tone deaf that's going to learn not to be tone deaf. Yeah. That's what I'm, and I think that's, that's the same thing with like rhythm, you know, with uh, playing mm -hmm. drums. Like you can obviously. There's some people that just can't do it, you know? Yeah. 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 And there's obviously the flip side of the coin. Like some people, uh, you know, I feel like having that innate sort of just talent or whatever, it's, you're not going to work quite as hard as somebody who like really has to push themselves you know because sometimes i feel like that's the thing right like yeah that's part of being in a tech band yeah yeah and the, i'm not, I'm not tr yeah like i'm not trying to brag but it's like i've easily just played like i don't 
I haven't worked half as hard as a lot of people I know at playing drums. You know, that's not me trying to brag, but I think that's honestly been a downside in a way because I'm just like, oh, whatever. I, I can always, yeah, I can bored. always, yeah, I'm just yeah. like, I can play drums. It's whatever. I'm going to go do, you know, this other thing. Like, and that's why I actually loved recording and stuff because I wasn't naturally like good at it. You know, it was something that I really had to work on. So. Yeah, I, I, get I had to work. I think I had to work better at getting on, on mixing. Producing for me feels like more natural, but like I feel like I got better at mixing over the years. That as far as working on stuff, uh, totally. but like you know, like for producing, like that's always felt like tracking never bothered me. You know what I'm saying? Just sitting there and doing the thing. Yeah, and uh, writing's always fun and. It's uh, impossible for me to not say how I feel, so I'm not. I try not to sugarcoat things. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> ask. Like, so do you have a hand in producing most of the stuff that you're engineering, just by way of being a musician and like wanting? I mean, if I feel like I'm welcomed into the environment, you obviously have to read every situation because sometimes you can tell that you're really just gonna be there to be an engineer guy, and they don't want you touching anything. Yeah, <clears throat> and. uh it is what it is, but it's hard. I'll probably say something anyway, but <laughs> not enough to make them. You got to make sure that they don't. You don't want to cause a shot vibe the whole time, you know. Yeah, yeah of course, but yeah. but when you do, when you are able to have that say, do you feel more a part of the project? Do you, yeah, do you I just feel always more? put just. I just make myself as though I'm part of the band. I don't really try to. It's not really about me. I'm just doing what I think is best for them. Totally. Yeah. Totally, and I, um, I can relate to that for sure. I mean, I, like, I have way different tastes than some stuff I would produce. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. So I, can I just relate do, to do what I would think would be good for them, rather than what I would. Because sometimes what I think is cool is super shot. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite kind of? What do you listen to most of the time? I, you know, I don't really listen to much. I guess what I've been, I'm always most fascinated by like film scores. You know, uh, I love film scores. Yeah. Are you? It's in just nonstop. Like, just seamless fucking key changes, and without making you feel yeah. sad. Well, no, sometimes they do make you feel sad, and that's the cool thing about it. That's the only, only, I think pretty much only like that's the only shit that'll like emotionally do something to my head when I'm listening to it. Well, but yeah. obviously, I want to hear sick riffs, and that always makes me stoked. But you know, it's like to actually get a real emotional reaction. Like and I never got a real emotional reaction from from any music, and definitely never from lyrics. Lyrics wow. have never done anything for me, really? regardless of who lyrics. writes okay. them. Okay, so lyrics. we've been going over that today because I'm working on a song that definitely would not be a song that I would normally work on. I'm I'm doing it, you know, for a purpose, and like the lyrics, I'm just like these are totally discombobulated. They don't mean shit, and to me, I can't imagine mm. lyrics not meaning something to people. I can't imagine well, not being judged. I, was like, I, dude, I can only tell. I can only tell when lyrics are horrible. Yeah. And usually, <laughs> usually if they're that bad, either the person's gonna be cool to be fixing a line because usually it's just like a line or something that sticks out at me, like just something that's so fucking cringy. Like, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but but you know, like, or if it's just like, what are you singing about? This is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as long as it's not distract as long as the lyrics aren't distracting enough to take me away from how you're saying them. Yeah, I totally get that. Which I It's really I've, more it's really more how you say it and what you're like to me is it's just more about the musical part of it. Yeah, but more about the, I'll the change, tonality. I'll change like certain words to make it fit if I feel like it needs more syllables, but I'm not about messing with with people's lyrics unless they're like I said unless they're fucking shot. I'm, I'm only good <laughs> at writing like shit about f fucking vaginas and dicks and that's it <laughs> <laughs> so those are your favorite lyrical subject matters yeah that's sick. just shit that's not real that, yeah uh, that's why necrogoblicon's like kind of a good place for me i'm not saying totally. that's all you sing about is vaginas because <laughs> i wish there was I mean, more if but you read further not. into it it's actually all about vaginas, vaginas and dicks it's fucking, that's all that all nikki like, writes we don't about we just want goblins yeah <laughs> or about uh mammal sauce that, see, that uh, that was back then. That was twenty. That was almost fucking twenty years ago, dude. You know what? Um, what's kind of funny is the bass player of Animosity at the time, Dan Kenny. He's in Suicide Silence now. Like, 
I know Dan. Okay, he, we were on tour. I think we were on tour when that album came out. And hey, he, I got to pee really, really bad. Can the interview go to Alex now for a minute? Yeah, of sure, course. Yeah, whatever. Just, it, it doesn't matter. Cool. You can just put it on the ground. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. What up? So, so Alex, <laughs> how have you been, man? I've been good. I've been uh, staying busy with Jason here. So it's, you know, it's Sick. the the lack of touring is, is made up yeah. for. With what about uh, the me. venue? What's going on with yeah, the venue? Yeah, what's going on with the Yeah, because you should tell people about yeah. this because I don't it's think the that they know. the best venue. venue. And not thank worried you, about thank it. you. Yeah, so yeah, uh, 1720, it's a venue that me and uh, my friends, Brett Powell and Travis Richter, who are also in bands, they were in the Human Abstract together. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Travis right. is also in From First to Last and uh, his new band, If I Die First. There you go. Um, well, so yeah, National all musicians, it's a musician owned venue that we, uh, it, it opened in December 2017. And yeah, we're in the same position that every other venue is in, unfortunately, right now. So it's like uh, it's totally but... closed, or what's the deal right now with it? Yeah, well, we're um, we're doing we're still open for doing video shoots, and uh, we're hosting live streams. We're actually hosting uh, a Jonas Brothers live stream in oh, December. Shit. Legit. Damn. Which can I awesome. can I go to Which that through, this, <laughs> through um, <laughs> Necrogalicons? Are uh, the guy who who did our first music video, who kind of came up with the John Goblicon character. He, uh, he, he brought that in. He's, he's directing it. So. Oh, that's okay. awesome. That's, well, that's, 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 a, that's a really good that's idea cool. though. That's a good way to kind of yeah. make up for the lost time. I mean, at least a little, I would think. Are yeah, a, every, every dollar helps, you know, so. are a lot of venues like in LA doing that pretty much though. Like, is it, is that sort of becoming like tough competition? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm seeing it happen with, uh, I know Troubadour is doing, a few things i think i heard that i heard that troubadour might be doing like a comedy or a a comedy store benefit show at some point oh that's awesome yeah Yeah, i I hadn't heard about that i don't know i I frequent the comedy store or frequented the comedy store have you have you been watching the documentary the uh which documentary Dude, there's a documentary about the comedy store that's like uh it's airing in weekly segments, but it's really fucking good. It's on oh, Hulu right now. I should check it out. To yeah. me, it's super interesting because I'm all like immersed in that. I love most of those people's podcasts. So everyone that I see, right. you know, them talking about it's, but yeah, you know, it's a historical LA place, but anyway. Well, that's good. I would just hate to see that place closed down. You know? Yeah, I know. That would be a bummer. Super, that'd be, super that'd super be the, that'd be more of a bummer to me than most of any. Yeah, me too. Me too. That I mean, fucking place is awesome. yeah, Seriously. the thing about 1720 is that because you guys run it, because you guys go on tour, have been on tour and know all about the shitty parts of tour that none of those exist at 1720. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you guys see that. Cause that's definitely, that was definitely the biggest inspiration. He has with, two handicap stalls. <laughs> two handicap stalls. <laughs> That's true. I I get changed in the handicap stall. Well, before Jason, have shows. you have you been to seventeen twenty? Jason, I have. Nice. I have. It was awesome. Oh. Should I go over to you? You want to? Nope, I'm taking it. Once you're done. Once you're done. But yeah, that was definitely that was an inspiration behind it. Was like, man, we were all been treated like shit at venues before, yeah. and it was like, would it be great if just people didn't have to experience that in LA at yeah. all. Yeah. You know, that was, that was yeah. definitely LA, and, you know, LA specifically. There are a lot of places like that. It's, it's and it's also LA, like every other, <laughs> I feel like at 1720, there's good parking around the venue as well, because a lot Solid. of places in LA, it's like, you're where in the fuck are you going to park? But there's street parking all around that venue. Well, luckily there's, you know, it's $20 parking for every 30 minutes, you know, in LA. Yeah. yeah totally. No shit. <laughs> gets it done <laughs> but do you well, miss yeah, that, it, it it was a that's one of the benefits of of being in this kind of like <laughs> not very developed area the the downside of it is it's kind of creepy on the outside a little creepy. but okay. but the i'd like to show you my creepy outsides <laughs> <laughs> show us your creepy insides that would be even yeah. but i mean that hey dude that builds character like for me i used to go to um venues in like the craziest parts of town when i was a kid like uh, in uh, Richmond, California, there was this venue. You just stand there naked. For oh, hours. near uh, near Oakland. Yeah, near Oakland, dude. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking called Burnt Ramen, and it oh, was like it was like there was literally train tracks. Like here's the train tracks, and here's the venue. 
it's like wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> like once you cross over, that's where it, uh, I mean, literally wrong side of the tracks. I mean, it was fucking awesome, dude, for me personally, but I'm kind of weird. So that's that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm into that, that kind of the diamond in the rough kind of venues. Like, whoa, where am I? Oh, like, whoa, you go in and you have the time it, of your life. Oh. Kind of, totally. It reminds me of uh, the, the Pound in San Francisco. Dude, the Pound. So that's that's what I'm talking about. You see, you went there? Yeah, I love that venue. Nice. Did Necro Gobicon play there? No, I think it closed down before we, we okay. ever started touring. Because we were, we were not a touring act for like the first like seven years of our existence. How so long have was, you guys been a band? Uh, since 2006, so holy yeah, 14 shit! Years. Yeah, 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 that is that <laughs> actually yeah. probably is. After. It was it was we were, we were in in college together, and it was like a it started off as just a, a joke project. You know, we were like just having fun, and then you know we were ambitious musically, but you know it was a fun project. We all had jobs, and um, we moved, ended up moving to LA, and uh, we kind of ran into this viral success and then that we're like hey let's do this for real and and Wait, here we are where are you guys from uh we're at this point we're kind of from everywhere but uh the the project started in palo alto uh, are you oh, from the, are you from palo alto shit. i'm from sacramento so i'm, oh, okay. I'm okay. nearby there but yeah oh, northern, northern northern california based You're from sacramento. Um, okay. at this point we our members are from all over america i'd say like we, each it. Uh, oh like, yeah, because Eric lives in Denver. I know that. Eric lives in Denver. He's originally from DC area. Oh shut up. Um, and uh, uh, Aaron, our, our keyboardist, is also uh, originally from Michigan. Also living near Denver. Um, and again, and uh, Joe is from. Joe's lived in Virginia for a lot of his life, and I think he's lived in Florida for a little while. I'd have to ask him about the exact history, but yeah, it's yeah. Joe lives here, huh? Yeah, yeah. In Why isn't he Hollywood. there with you right now, slaving over this new Necro Goblicon? What was that? I said, "Why isn't he there with you right now, slaving over this new Necro?" Uh, he's, <laughs> he's not allowed to come here. <laughs> <laughs> he's been restricted like from the studio. Yeah, yeah. Jo, uh, Jason banned Joe from from the studio for uh, for being too cool. Makes yeah, dude, sense. He's fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> so you ready for? Uh, Alex, hold on. I gotta ask you something. So you used to okay. go to show, you used to go to shows at the Pound when you were a kid. Then, I honestly, I think I've only been to a couple shows there. Okay. Um, are you saw, uh, are you like I saw mid thirties? Hour there, right after they re- released Undoing Ruin. Was okay. that when Chris Norris was in the band? Yes. Yeah. That's that's the only time. That's that's when I knew Darkest Hour. Oh, that album was incredible. How? I don't know what album that is. I just know the one that Frederick Norsham did. I don't, yeah, I'm not sure who produced it. But. How old are you, Alex? Are, are you my age? Like thirty five. I'm thirty three. Okay. okay. 33, 33. All right. All right. Yeah. How old are you guys? I'm I'm thirty two. Yeah, thirty five. Yeah, 35. we're old. Yeah. We're in the old <laughs> club, man. Yeah. I'm fucking forty, bro. <laughs> You're in the older club. That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, that's cool. My old band used to be like the pound like house band. You know what I mean? We we're like the ultimate local band. We used to play there all like every weekend. All right, that's oh, awesome. an exaggeration, but we used to play there a lot for sure. We played actually the last show there. Like they called us up and they're like yeah we're actually having to close and we're doing a last show like tomorrow you guys want to play and we're like yeah obviously oh that's awesome yeah so that's crazy little bay area history yeah yeah. did you ever go to burnt ramen then uh i haven't heard of it okay yeah it was in richmond that's kind of i don't know kind of far from (laughs) that sounds like the name of a school burnt ramen 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 it is it was uh, it was great. Burnt ramen the school. I don't know. Dude. I don't it know. Just sounds like the name of a middle school or whatever school. Just that's what it sounds like. That actually sounds we were like the a movie. That's what I would name the school. Burnt ramen. <laughs> yeah, in a movie, in a comedy movie. Like, I could in like a movie. trauma vision movie or something like yeah. that. You know yeah. what is great? Vice principals is. I wish they would do yeah, another I know, season. I, know. Uh, I mean, dude, Eastbound and Down is like five thousand times better. Than I know, but I love I that don't one agree guy at all. What? I had, the first season was amazing. You and think then, it was better than Eastbound and Down? I'm talking about Eastbound and Down oh, right now. Oh, my bad. The okay. First, the first season was. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I was, I was, all right, all right. I'm just saying. I'm the first down. season was super. It was amazing. Like, yeah. you can't even. Like, I don't think they'll they'll be able to top that. And then, like, the rest of the seasons were just kind of, like uh, second season yeah, when he yeah. goes to Mexico. And then, it's got, super good. then it got good again. Yeah, at the yeah. End. That's yeah. just my opinion. I don't know. Well, I'm do you saying. do you like the newer one? That what's the name of it? They're they're he's a preacher. Oh, uh, the. Uh, 
we can't even remember the name. Gemstones. Yeah, Righteous, righteous Gemstones. gemstones. It, yeah. it, it was good. It had it good. like glimmers of it's hope gonna, in it. I'd like to see the next season, but it was good. Same. And and uh, but Vice Principals is amazing, and Walton Goggins is amazing. Which one's Walton Goggins? He's the other one that's not Danny McBride. Oh yeah, okay. Is he, is he like the Shield? Yeah, that guy's fuck. I haven't, dude. I only watched the first two episodes of the Shield. Uh, I need to get more into it, but that show, that guy is tight. Dude, I fucking Walton love Goggins. that guy. That guy is so funny, and he's in um the Righteous Gemstones. You watch that? You're saying? Yeah. Because his character in Righteous <laughs> Gemstones is so yeah. fucking hilarious, hilarious, dude. I love that guy. <laughs> Dude, Jason, you know what show we got hit off to because of you is Nathan for you. It's so good, right? You watch the entire dude. Yeah. It's so good. Have you watched the last episode, the documentary? Oh yeah. Oh my I, we've god. We've seen them all. I, oh. I, they're not doing anything else, right? No, I don't. I he's think making a new show. Yeah, he's producing a new show that's coming on HBO. I don't know if he's actually in it, but it. it man, every everything went to HBO, huh? Well, yeah, they're probably paying huge money, man. No, I'm just yeah, I know, but it's like is Comedy Central part of HBO now? I don't know, um, but I would assume the thing is that like with HBO, you just have more freedom, you know? To oh yeah, that, oh, do you? I mean, maybe with nudity. Well, nudity and and cursing i would assume i don't so. think i don't think you can curse more anywhere can you, you i feel can, like fxx they're, they're wait, fucking ready can, to party i i haven't watched cable television in a long yeah. time Maybe it's can, just fx can you cuss just, on comedy central i don't know i don't have regular i just have apple tv but it yeah. seems like on on fucking like uh always sunny they do whatever are they moving to or who else is moving to hbo that you're talking about south park Oh shit! Really? Yeah. And then what? What else is on HBO that? Dude, that was that, on that's like a everything. huge fucking deal. They've been on Comedy Central for the past twenty years or some shit. Yeah, the pandemic special was on HBO, even though you could buy it on iTunes too. How was the pandemic special? I it was great. It. Yeah, it was amazing. They fucking they've been killing it for years now. Like they're yeah. so just every like. Even more so than the first thing I saw, because I wasn't really into South Park until I saw the season where they got the dolphin plasty. Oh, yeah. I've seen that up as, yeah. And I was just like, this is so ridiculous. It's amazing. We need to fucking watch this forever. And after that, it was cool. But I, it seemed annoying before that to me. I don't know why. Like, I don't want to watch season one right now ever. Dude, it <laughs> seemed so great to me when I was a kid because I was so young that my mom would send me to bed and South Park came on at nine and she would stay up watching South Park and I would like try to sneak yeah. out to watch it behind her back. <laughs> and and like, so it like was always cigarette. so endearing. <laughs> yeah, it's like a cigarette. That's why I smoked a whole pack of cigarettes when I was 12, you know, and, and it, I don't know. It just has always been so endearing to me and it's been fucking hilarious since the beginning to me, in my opinion. But I also prefer Eastbound to Vice Principals. So I feel like you checked out too hard on Vice Principals because you were all sad it wasn't. No, but I East I watched Vice Principals. Everything, the whole thing. The whole thing. It's it's hilarious. But the thing is that like Eastbound was the first one. There's uh, even an Exhorter song in like the third episode or something. I don't even know who Exhorter. I've never listened to Exhorter in my no, life. All right, dude. I don't. Right, dude, I don't it's, it's it's okay, dude. They're, they kind of were like. From what I understand, Pantera got their guitar sound kind of from from them. Oh shit! All right, but I could be wrong yeah. about that. I don't want to be some guy who's spreading lies, and they're like, "You made up this lie." <laughs> well, I just heard the lie from somebody else. All is, right, isn't that kind of how it always happens, though? Like, yeah, but someone I'm taking myself out of the fucking loop yeah, by saying it's, I didn't fucking make it you up. You didn't make it up, but you know, usually there's a lesser known band that comes up with a sound and then someone get well, someone they're else friend, they're both from texas i think oh shit oh dang Damn. okay now we're getting into some real we got stuff war here. we need to look into this you know what i feel like can you google that make sure i'm not just talking out of my ass here i'll look it up yeah, no what about exhorter just see where they're from okay. just go to their wiki exhorter it's H. I, got it, right. I got it i got it i already got it, it. i'm on it kind of had that guitar that they're fucking... from new orleans dude okay new orleans? that counts that's kind of the same though 85 to 94. Isn't that, isn't that where Pantera's from? No, they're from Texas. I know that. I think Phil, Phil lives. Yeah, Phil's from New Orleans. Yeah, Phil's from, they're from DFW, dude. So is Goat Whore. Dallas, Fort Worth. That's right. I like, I like Texas. Dude, when I'm we Texas played guy. NOLA with Goat Whore and that shit popped the fuck off. Like, those people love Goat Whore so much. 
I actually haven't listened to them in a long time, but my fucking Eric records them. I don't know if he if they've recorded with them lately, but Eric Rutan does all their stuff, I thought. Oh, word. He might. All right. Eric's you... one of the nicest guys in the world. Really? Yeah, so know that. If anyone's like, hey, is Eric Rutan the nicest guy in the world? He'd be like, yes. <laughs> yes, he is. I, I actually one. I met him a little bit because the last animosity tour was with Hey Eternal. He's a great guy, isn't he? Yeah, but they were only on it for like a week, and then they had to drop off. I don't really know why, but he was like way into sports. So you know what, dude? We've never talked about sports. No, he's way into sports. So I remember him. You think like, he's like, oh man, he doesn't want to talk about sports. He's in a fucking wheelchair. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't. I don't think he thinks there's, that at all. There are sports that happen in wheelchairs, though. Of course there is. And no one wants to watch that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I kind of do. <laughs> No, but he would because Evan was big. Evan's like big into sport, like football. Like you know, it's his his hobby, I guess. Just like paying attention to football. So he'd be like, "Evan, man, what? Like, why? Like, why are you looking so down, dude? You know, the Titans just won last night. You know, like kind of stuff like that." And I was like, "Dang, that's that's pretty cool." You know, that's what's cool about being in sports. All the Morris Sound guys were sports, big into sports too. And Morris Sound's kind of like what got me what I wanted to make. That's the recording place that I kind of worshipped. Oh yeah. Well, I don't. I have no idea who that is. What did they, what you don't have know they about Morris Sound? No. Well, studios? I'm not like an engineer, so I don't know that much about engineers. Levine, do you know about Morris Sound? I know the name, but I don't know much more than that. I'm just like it was. It was opened with Jim and Tom Morris and uh, brothers, and they did like all the Morbid Angels and all the Death albums and yeah, okay. uh, all the oh, okay. all the obituary albums and uh, Pierce from Within and Scott Burns. Scott Burns yeah, did like um, Pierce from him. That's a, legit. A he did a bunch of my favorite albums. I'd say fucking Death Human, Individual Thought Patterns was sick too. Oh shit! Okay, so Symbolic, I should know. Symbolic about. was okay, but fucking I don't know. I'm with Human and Individual, mostly Human. Yeah, yeah I'm, human. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, in the, I'm uh, into the original mix just because I don't know. I can't get into remixes. They make me sad no matter what. Really? Uh, I guess I'm technically kind of like a poser because I'm I'm all about. Uh, Sounds of perseverance. Uh, Does that yeah, make dude, me a poser? That's kind of a poser move. Is that a poser move? <laughs> that's for real? a that's no, a really a good of, record. A lot of people, though. that's their favorite death album, and I'm in a band with the drummer on that album, so it's a poser yeah. move yeah. for me. That not to be my favorite. <laughs> but you something. know what actually makes me not but a poser? Jim, that Jim my... did that album. Okay. Jim did Jim did uh, symbolic and sound. That's legit. Yeah, that's and then legit. the 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 two control denies. So wait, how do those guys tie into sports? I no. just remember being there and them fucking oh, okay. watching, talking about the Tampa Bay who, Buc- Buccaneers or whatever. <laughs> because I don't give a shit about sports. Yeah, I can't, me neither, man. I, it's, like, there's, I can't think of anything fucking worse than like going somewhere and you think you're going to have a good time and it's just a bunch of fucking whoever watching sports. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about <laughs> I sports. Totally right agree. Now. I totally You know what, though? I can, I can it. find myself giving a fuck about MMA for like the day of the fight. Yeah, I was, you know, just fucking show me the part where the dude fucking gets real hurt, and I'm cool. Yeah, with it. Yeah. I don't need to fucking watch the fucking ramp up and the fucking yeah. whoever cares after. Yeah, yeah I, feel I like mean, it. it's fun. Like, if you're at a park, like, maybe you might go to a friend's house or something, they're watching I respect, the UFC. I respect get into everyone's it. abilities. I realize that everyone's at the top of their game and the best in the in the country and, and all that. I just, I don't know. I, it's not you my know. thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree, man. Trust me. Uh, that's yeah, not same. my thing by any means. We are not sports people. I did play sports when I was a kid, but I, I did, w- have never been into watching that shit. It's boring. Yeah, no, Dude, I don't care. Oh, that's, I, ch- uh, that's CB right? softball. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate it to the part where I'm like, I don't want to see it or we're going to fucking... <laughs> no, I'm not, I, I don't get offended by it. I don't... I'm just... Uh, I just don't want to watch it with a group of people and and because there's going to be there's gonna be a level of enthusiasm there that I'm going to not be able to pretend to have. Actually, you know what? I have pretended to have that enthusiasm, and I'll tell you why. I went on tour with this band called Dredge. You know that band? Oh yeah. And they were like they're from Judge Dredge. Dredge. Judge Dredge. <laughs> so they're big into uh, San Fran- like f- baseball because they're way into the Giants. And uh, I lived there, so they were always going after like the shows to watch the games. And uh, I hung out with them at Hooters. It was the first time I've ever been to Hooters, and it they was got when, good wings. And it was the first time, yeah. I 
I, I ate wings at that point. And boobs. When you go to Hooters, anyway, hold, though, hold, you're kind of like start. the Look, waitress is here. You're killing them. I know. <laughs> so wait a minute. We went to Hooters to watch the like final. I don't even know what it's called. But they won the final series or whatever. And that was like the first time the Giants had done it since like 18. And the whole something. place fucking lit up, right? Well, no, we were in like Dallas or something. So nobody gave a shit. But they were like, yeah, you know, they were so happy. And I, hey, I'm not going to lie. I partook in the happiness. Yeah. <laughs> I could I see being like, into we it. We did it, point. man. <laughs> Dude, I'm not really a fan of much else at Hooters except for the food wise, except for the fucking wings. Like, didn't we go to Hooters? Because I'm, to watch I'm usually on. No, we went to Buffalo. I'm, I'm usually on some form of, of like no carb diet. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, the best way to get the wings there is with the breading. Like, hell. you get no breading on those wings, and you're just kind of wasting your time. I know. That's mm. hell, dude. That's and called eating, hell. And eating a burger there with no buns super sad. It's not like you can get some crazy burger that's been introduced into the world at yeah. Hooters. You know what I'm saying? No, being low carbs is what I consider to be hell. I, well, I like it. That's how I eat a lot of them. Like, literally since I've been 18, just, uh, it's been hell. I lost 100 pounds. I went from two eight three yeah two eighty to one eighty, and then back up to two sixty, and then down to like one eighty again, and then back up to two forty. I'm like a fucking yo yo. It's called yo yo dieting. That's what that's called. Well, I'm sure at some point my I'll get to the bottom or the top of that the yo yo, and my heart <laughs> will explode. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. it doesn't happen soon. <laughs> I actually like eating low carb though. I. Uh, it, does, it makes me feel better. And I've been doing it so long that I think it's the only pl- like thing that my body understands because I've been doing it for like twenty two years almost. What's your like favorite? More than not. What's your favorite low carb meal? A little cheat. None of them. Uh, yeah, low carb <laughs> sucks. Honestly, dude. it's so like, <laughs> fucking gross. It, it's probably I've got these tortillas now. At least there's tortillas, but I'll I'll take like these uh, five carb tortillas mm. and I'll I'll put on butter. And peanut butter. Oh, shit. And fucking cinnamon and, and sweet and low and roll it up and I'll fucking go to town. Yeah, that's like not even Damn. low carb though at that point. It is. No, it's not. It, it is pretty low carb. Day, no, because peanut, day, but, peanut butter has like, like 12 grams of carbs. Yeah, but peanut butter, th- I am like one of those people. It's low, it's low carb peanut butter too. It's only like oh. three grams. It's only like three grams for two tablespoons. And I don't even use. Okay. Like near that for for one of them, but what? you do you do because when I did low carbs, I didn't do the like oh subtract the fiber from the. I do that. Thing that's a I thing do that. now. But I didn't do I that. Really... I didn't do that. I was like, no, I'm doing low carb. Fuck that. No, no deduction of fiber. But the thing is that you find all these things with low carb. Like I fuck with these low carb tortillas from Walmart too, and those are they good. they're yeah, so high fiber that they cancel out every single carb in the tortilla. That's the ones I'm talking about. Yeah. but but I I don't even. Uh, I, I will say though it's harder to get into ketosis, like starting that way. So it is no, best dude, to just, did, just no. to like eat eggs for a couple of days. Yeah. What I did not, was like straight up no bull, like no fucking around. Just do like cottage cheese like and meat, chicken. And like fucking ever since the veggies. pandemic, like the meat quality has gone down. Yeah. I don't know. At least I've here, been vegetarian since the good, pandemic. We found so. a good steak the other day, but like two or three times we got steaks, and regardless of how good they were cooked, they just didn't. They weren't sick. Weird. I don't miss I mean, it. And I, I, and I feel it. super bad about it. I don't like to fucking waste meat because yeah. it was a fucking thing, you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a piece of shit. Not as much. I feel like you would feel more like a piece of shit because the, the, you're not going to the thing with the food, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I went back to being vegetarian and then coronavirus hit. So I was like, hey, I don't really care. Whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I eat vegetarian too, but I've so, never really been into steak, no matter what. I, it's just I not love, my I shit. I used to fucking love steak. Maybe you haven't had a good steak, but I'm sure. No, I dude, just, Jamie, I that's not true. When I used to make skirt steak on the grill. Oh, yeah, skirt steak I would like, but I only like really thin slices of meat. I don't like thick stuff. Like, that's what turns me vegetarian originally, is we went to a like five-star restaurant in New York City with our friend, and he ordered all of this incredible steak, and I tried it, and it freaked me out so much that i went vegetarian for two years it did happen happen. i just hated it that sounds horrible i would hate to be (laughs) uh fucking unattractive eating (laughs) i'd hate to be fucking the word i just like simple vegetarian food that's what i like to eat actually when i went to your place i like i went shopping once and i got the 
exact amount of food and then just ate that the whole time I was there. And then the last day we got Domino's. Yeah, and, it was and I also of... fucking torpedoed your salsa. Do you have like a? Do you have like a? <laughs> I don't even know what that means? What the fuck? Do you have a ritual <laughs> that you do when records are done? No, I was like, get, get the hell out of here, dude. Yeah, I'm fucking like, seen enough of you. Peace. You didn't listen to records here. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering that too. It's very rare. It's very really rare that I'll, it's it's hard to even listen to stuff after it's done for a second because you'll judge oh it God, too much, or because you just like are so it's, over it. It, it. depends on what it is, but you know, usually it's like okay, I just spent weeks mixing this and maybe even mixing it again with notes and whatever. And I'm I don't the last thing I'll check it out check out the mastering when it's done. You know, dude, that's a tough job, man. That's why I was like I started to get into it, and I, and I was honestly like. All right, I want to be a recording engineer. That's my thing. And then once I recorded a few bands and did it for a while, I was like, you know what? This really sucks. And I actually I mean, hate I a, music, I, and I don't want to do one this. One thing that helps is it's having a, a separate engineer. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. To uh, to like do your editing or whatever, so yeah, you don't have yeah. to worry about that clean clean up stuff. I don't like to stop to do that at this point because it's just going to slow me down and make everyone mad. Totally. So, do you use like a lot of? Uh, digital stuff, or do you fuck with mostly analog? Both. Board. Yeah. I, it's definitely not like a more or less. I just, I have a mix. I have a summing mixer, so I want everything to go through that. And I have like a dedicated, like, uh, A to D yeah. for the two channel. Yeah. I try to have at least the best for, you know, and when I say the best, Nowhere near the amount of money that you could pay for them if you really wanted to get the best. Because there's some, I feel like after a certain amount of money, you're just being a fucking giant piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I agree, man. And, and that's the thing. It's like, how much of a difference does it really make? I see people yeah. drop all this fucking hi fi stereophile shit, like the stereophile guys, and they'll drop it into a fucking room that's not treated, and they'll sit there and they'll be like, yeah. And then maybe it sounds sick. But it's like you're not even hearing the shit at all, maybe, yeah. correctly in the low end. And it's like, how could you spend that much on that and not think about the environment it's in? And it's like, it's very easy, too, to, like, not know enough about acoustics and think that just throwing fucking some 703 or some mineral wool in a fucking in a frame and then throwing some fabric over it is going to treat low end. It's like, that's not going to do I, anything. That's exactly what under, yeah. that's exactly what hurts or something. You're you need explain, a membrane trap. You're explaining yeah, exactly a hundred percent what Naveen does to his room. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, but I don't I, claim well, to be some fine, fucking big shot. Yeah. I, right? yeah, I don't fucking care. Right. I'm not. And if I do, do mix you, something, it's not like, you know, I, I don't claim to be some huge mix engineer and I don't want to do it. I hate it. So I don't claim to be anything except, fucking hugely annoyed by acoustical treatment because like <laughs> well, so, fucking rooms it's just it's really about at the end of the day it's like how good is your low end how clearly can you hear your low end and like I don't know and it, you need fucking membrane traps and they even have electronic traps that go down to 20 hertz now but they're like 4 grand a trap they change the the resonance in the air I think that's what it does is it change it's a what are those things called that are like a uh, transducer Ron, what are those things called? The fucking things that are on right. It's like an inverted. It's like a. They're on like. They make like. Ex, they feel like shit explodes. Ron, what's those things that are in those bass traps? Transducers? I think it's a. Tra in those. Oh, the PSI audio? Things? Yeah, what's in that? Is that a transducer? Probably. It's probably like. I don't know. I would love to know. I thought you said really crazy stuff. Like a solenoid oh, speaker, yeah. It's probably like a low end, one of those under twenty hertz things that go out of phase. But that's they—they they have those on like rides and stuff, right? Yeah, I think it They're, is a transducer. A transducer is a device that converts <laughs> energy it, from one no, it form to another. Changes the impedance in the air, not the resonance. I'm sorry. It that, that's what it does, and it makes it so that an all bass trap is is just like an open window. If in, in a perfect world, it's just like an open window to the outside that allows pressure not to build up. So that's yeah. all a bass trap is. But also, it's usually never as good as a, a real window open to the outside because it's just some fucking, you know, 
fab. It's some 703 or mineral wool. That's what this is. And then, right behind me. I, I, I made a bunch of these. That's, like, and that's probably, it's fairly decent. It's really good for high end and, and mid range, but you know, it's not doing any diffusion to it. It's just all absorption and you can see whatever. You can look at the chart and see like it's doing a lot up there, but not, not much under a hundred. Yeah, that's why I don't want to be a recording well, engineer because so, I don't want to fucking care about that. But kind the of thing stuff. is, you know, today nowadays it's like everyone is a bedroom producer. I mean, not everyone. There's still the random people who aren't. But for those people, like if someone wanted to be a bedroom producer, what would you advise them to have present? Uh, I really don't know much about like what interfaces are good. Like I know that there's like an Apogee Rosetta. That's pretty. Is that what it's called? Or is that a, 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 <laughs> Ron is like your. Uh, yeah. He's your producer. Is it the Apogee Duo? Is there a duo? There's a duet also. Okay, the Apogee Duet is like. That's probably a good interface. So that's what know? I think is crazy. It's like you've been engineering and stuff longer than the whole bedroom producer was a thing. You know, you no, I mean, like, there was always. I guess there wasn't bedroom producers. No, as much. dude, hell no, there wasn't, man. No way. Not until Not like, like this, 2010, no. I mean, 2011, the thing is, 12. Is, you know, right. sometimes you'll make some good sounding shit and, you know, because you're not thinking about the fucking acoustics and you get, you know, especially when you get everything like EQ'd for you already, like, you know, like drum libraries and stuff, they sound so good yeah. that, you know, you're really just, you're starting with the best case scenario, totally. which is, it's, you know, it's today's version of a drum machine. Yeah. But I miss drum machines a lot <laughs> like f- hardware drum machines yeah i was really good with them <laughs> yeah yeah they're sick really i their, have a their I, response time was way better than like any like midi controller that you can buy i think uh, yeah, like there was there's just something better about them because it was more like the thing it was it was a, it was the computer itself so you don't have to deal with any sort of problems other than it breaking and not working ever. Again. Is that what was crotch duster drum machine or was it's, it? Yeah, most of it was. There was like maybe a couple of songs. Pro, I we did most of that before I had Pro Tools, nice. and then well, I remixed. I remixed it and made one song in Pro Tools because I had a DA seventy eight, which are basically like eight millimeter eight ads. Dang, that's crazy. Well, I don't even know what that is. It's fucking really expensive tape machines that are eight channels each that linked up together. They look like VCRs. That's Damn. insane. You ever seen eight ads? Or... No. Damn, dude. No, I, I, I've seen Everyone that. hates <laughs> me. It's fucking over for me, dude. <laughs> Should I be sad? Am I getting sad? No, no. <laughs> no. Am I shot, dude? Should I cut off my legs? No, you're, you're legit. No Should problem. I cut it all off, dude? Everything? Cut it all off. Time to cut Just fucking take crossover. pictures. No, you're good, man. You're good. Okay. You're good I'm just, for sure. just in case. No, I'm saying that's always been crazy to me to think like people that uh, like you and I know Zach pretty pretty well, Zach Aaron, and it's like you guys have been doing the engineer side of things like l- as long or longer than I've been doing like the band side. And that's always just, I don't know. It must be weird from your perspective to not have done the whole band thing. You know what I mean? It's, it's just weird. No, I did. I had a band. Yeah. Did you hit the road? We drove to Canada once. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't count in my mind, dude. Like, you haven't hit no, the fucking never, road we for like six tour. weeks. We were, band, we were in a band for like a good three or four years. At, at With least, Capharnaum, you know? right? Yeah, I had a good time, man. Fucking that. I, I, wanted, I wanted to do that for real, but fucking, I guess reality is when, when studio time is way more, Yeah, you know, I mean, much more economically fine yeah on no level gig. does it make sense to be in a band like being in a band is pretty much um career oh, suicide it, it, it depends you know who could say who's to say sometimes shit works out yeah i mean mathematically times, to it say never works also, out but yeah. what are you gonna do it's not a good idea so, i say <laughs> if you want to fucking take a risk Fucking, you better make sure that you have a backup plan so that you're not <laughs> fucking. That's all. If if you want to yeah. take a risk, but you don't have anything, I don't know, dude. I'm not a fucking dad. I'm not a real dad. <laughs> you <laughs> are saying, like I'm a dad, not, though. You're I'm like not, a, you're like a father dad. of yeah. You're an apple dad. Apple, apple dads father. Don't fucking tell people how to live, dude. We just tell people to be safe. 
<laughs> we're we're, we're kind of like cart narcs, except fucking less dangerous. What's cart narcs? Oh, dude, cart narcs is amazing. <laughs> what is it? It's. I think you guys have this thing called the Woody Show out there. I don't know. Oh, the Woodies, oh, no. like the Woodies on the on the wharf. You're talking about the wood wagon cars. I have no fucking clue oh. what you're talking no, about. Right cart now, narcs but it sounds delicious. is. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> It's like this guy who harasses. It's made, of, it's made of wood, so unless you are a beaver. It's a guy who harasses people who leave their cart and they don't put it back in the little cart. Uh, yeah, it's just dude, like he like literally fucking he like patrols parking lots in different. He goes around different states and mostly California, I think. And when people don't put their fucking carts back, he fucking woo 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 fucking and he and he he fucking tells them how to live and That's sometimes. Awesome. Sometimes they're fucking nightmares, and sometimes they're hilarious, and you should just check it out. The I'm thing not is selling, that I'm not I, good at selling things. I could. The thing is, I go to the store and I get pissed when people don't put their carts back. Well, you would love it this fucking thing because oh. this is this is gonna. You'll feel like like I found someone who I can relate to in the, you in might the world be a of homeboy here. Yeah. You know, it's funny. After I got home, like a friend of mine posted on Facebook, he bought. Cart Narcs merch. After I got back from your guys's from recording with you guys, and I was like, "Damn, what a shit. I know what that is. That's kind of funny." Jason, you seem to know about like all the cool shows. What's the coolest show right now? The cool show right now. Check out Upload on Amazon. Okay, what is it? It's about it's about uh, a guy. And he's with this chick, and he dies. And in in the world, when you die, well, no, he's going. He goes into the hospital, and all of a sudden, it's like, "Hey, uh, sign this so we can upload you." Oh, all right. And, oh. and then it's kind of like a Black Mirror, right? like that episode of Black. I, Mirror. I, did, I I can't deal with Black Mirror, dude. It makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> How many episodes have you watched of it? Of well, what, of, every I mean, episode is going to make it's, him it's, sad. It's over. Oh, you've but watched it's basically it basically the dude gets uploaded in like AT and T and Verizon. They're all different companies that when you die, you go to their fucking thing, and uh, that's it. Yeah, don't upload me. I'm not doing that. Go, I, I'm not selling it at all. But I promise you, it was way fucking cooler <laughs> than we thought it was going to be. <laughs> it, I wish it didn't stop. Then you and Ron nice. thought it was going to be. Do me and Ron don't fuck around. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you know what I love is that you and Ron did what Cheney and I did, which was make a big Italian dinner and watch the motherfucking Sopranos. Yeah, yeah. dude. The Sopranos <laughs> is probably the best show ever. Dude, we've been watching I it mean, again, man. I mean, Sopranos so is the good. best show ever. But you got to have Italian food. It's, it's, yeah, with Italian food. Honestly, I could it's do better without, with Italian food. I could do without Melfi. No, not true. No, Why? love me some Melfi. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's just like every single. Tell me about your mother. I feel like the dialogue <laughs> isn't the the best when he goes to Melfi. Like the dialogue starts getting wonky, and I don't like her Whatever dialogue. Whatever the fuck, angle yeah. one. Yeah. What, the thing is, what's, I, he, what's they, wrong with they her? Have there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with her, but I, no, maybe have, I don't think Lorraine Bracco is Bracco is that good of an actress. That might be it. I don't know, dude. I think she was. I didn't, get any vibes like i've never i was never distracted by her acting yeah i'm i've I, been distracted by bad acting and she's not one of them yeah that's true when when the scenes of her come in i'm not like distracted by it but i'm like uh, i'd like to skip this well, section. I, I was thinking in, on a practical sense they brought that in because it's in place of a narration yeah, which you know, when like he told me that, I kind of agreed with it. Instead but. of a narrator, they have him I talking. Think you're to thinking somebody. way too fucking hard. You're not watching hard enough. Yeah, no, I dude, Stop. I watch we're, very we're, okay. So we're boo. rewatching The Sopranos right now, and I'm actually astounded. This is my fourth time watching it, and I'm and astounded. You're, still watching, you're finding new shit, right? Yeah, I'm astounded just by how great of actors they all are. Like they're but all new incredible. shit. Like because you get to know each character. Oh yeah. On like a different watch, you can kind of concentrate more on what's going on. Way more. And you're like, they're not acting. That's just they're. Yeah, I don't them. feel like they're actors, and that's why it was kind of hard for me to watch Nurse Jackie. 
even though I ended up well, liking that I, show. I, I, we didn't do that. I don't think we could watch that. Yeah, I can't. I, I like know. I don't want to ruin. I feel like it would ruin Sopranos. Somehow. I know. It's yeah. just not doing it. Well, you know. Okay, you know the the pastor in Sopranos that yeah, Carmela starts he, having uh, a thing with. It, it took me eleven watches to, to to realize that when she was talking to him, there was stuff she's like, "Don't touch that. That's for a, a thing tomorrow." And then uh, when when uh, Milfi called to tell him that um, she's like, I need to cancel my appointment. And oh, yeah. she didn't know that he was seeing a, a female psychiatrist. Right. And she's like, why does she do this to me, father? And, and that was a horrible. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty But uh, while, while he's, while she's like complaining to him, he's like eating all the food. She said not to eat from the fridge. I didn't even notice that part. I know exactly what you're talking about. Concentrating yeah. on food during that part. Right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he it plays her husband in Nurse Jackie. Oh, yeah. So it's a like, weird. He, he was on he was on Oz too. Oh, she was in Oz as well. Yeah, she was. I haven't seen Oz, but I know the I think we watched a little bit of it, didn't we? No, we watched I think a little he was bit in of Oz it anyway. There. Ron was the priest in Oz. <laughs> Ron, dude. Ron. <laughs> Can we hire Ron? Yeah, Ron. Is Ron looking to be hired to be a producer? No, he was. He was in SVU. He was in a couple of SVU episodes. Ron Beanie was? Long was in Oz. Wait, Ron was, was SVU. in SVU? <laughs> was Ron in SVU? Ron was not in SVU. <laughs> <laughs> SVU. SV. I love SVU, dude. I'm not I'm, I'm not into I'm SVU. Sure. I don't I can't talk shop on SVU. <laughs> That's okay, dude. I don't it's just no, no shop time. Why? <laughs> totally. Well, hey, fucking Jason, dude. I I, I want to thank you for being on the show. I think we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Because Jay and I have to up, finish dude. up. We gotta finish up this song we're working on and shit. And we're gonna Is make it that one where you have the sick riff where it's all like. No, it's not an Anthea song. It's just a. It's just a thing. It's a thing. I don't know if she's allowed to announce it. It's something that we she was hired to do. Yeah, I was hired to do. So. I never get hired to do anything, dude. Everyone's like, hey, I know. can you go do something for me real quick? We'll see how it turns out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. dude, we'll no see how it turns that. out. Well, we might pay you. But anyway, you dude, know, Jason, dude. It's a thank secret. you. Dude, thank you yeah, so much for doing you. our podcast, And man. also, it's nice to be nice. Let's yeah. hang out soon. Fuck Talk yeah, yeah dude. Fuck fucking, yeah. All right, brother. Rock on. Thanks for coming, Jason. Bye. Right. We'll see you later. <laughs> all right. That was that. We had Jason motherfucking Sukov. Hope you guys enjoyed Badass that, that random ass chat. That's what we do, though. You know? Of course. This is, that's home that's base. That's what we do. Dude, got to get some. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. This is the Copper Crab.